Hi guys, I'm back and I figured I would do another Reddit reading. The, some of these are just no mother-in-law, um, am I the asshole, relationship ones. And yeah, I figured I would read some and see where it goes. I hope everyone had a happy new year. This is my makeup look I did on my live in my group, so... It's, you know, pretty dramatic, but I did it for my makeup group and figured I would do a video. So, this one is a glitter trap for snooping mother-in-law. This was originally posted in Am I the Asshole? Several people suggested I post it here as well. So here it is. This will be going, or we will be going to couples therapy in January. So I'm hopeful we can work on better ways to enforce boundaries. For some weird reason, my mother-in-law really wants to go into our bedroom whenever she comes over. On one occasion, I followed her as she went upstairs. I was going to get something for my child as the bedrooms are upstairs. And she walked past the bathroom on the main floor and up the stairs behind it. She didn't hear me and I caught her walking straight into my room and rifling through bills on my dresser. Okay, that would piss me off. She, not, she denied snooping, even though I just watched her do it, and said she was just going to use her bathroom because she couldn't find the other ones. We walked right past the one on the main floor and another one in the upstairs hallway to go into our bedroom. Since that happened, I installed an exterior doorknob that requires a key on our bedroom door and no one and one on the door to our office spare bedroom however she's still always forgetting where the bathroom is and trying the bedroom and office door this really ticks me off my husband says i just get annoyed at this because everything she does drives me crazy and since we put locks on the rooms we don't want her in there really isn't a problem anymore i don't know i probably do the same that's messed up well, over the holidays, we had my in-laws over for dinner, and before they came, I was searching for the bedroom keys. We hadn't used them in a while since we only lock the doors when mother-in-law comes over. My husband told me he, we didn't need to lock the doors since she wouldn't try to get into the rooms, and I insisted that she would because she loves to snoop. We went back and forth and decided to cover the doorknobs in super fine glitter to see if she tried them. I did this be once before when husband didn't believe me about s the snooping to prove she'd been in the rooms. Last time she ignored the glitter and we didn't say anything about it, but then my husband couldn't deny that she tried to snoop. So this time I covered the knobs in glitter and for the office went a touch further and rigged a little folder of glitter over the door to the office before the in-laws came over. I left it one side unlocked, French doors, and I, it was set so if you walked in the room, you'd get covered in glitter. That's a good one, actually. Husband goes out of his way to show his mom the main floor bathroom when they get here and specifically asks his parents and sister not to go upstairs. There's a baby gate so the kids can't get upstairs either. Well, guess who had to go to the bathroom and got covered in glitter and had it all over their hands and hair? She completely lost it and started screaming at me, so I yelled back, and now my husband is saying I went too far and I'm the asshole. Mother-in-law says I'm the asshole, but sister-in-law says I didn't do anything wrong and mother-in-law deserved it for snooping. Father-in-law is Switzerland. Apparently her car is ruined now, too, because it's covered in glitter that she just can't get up or get cleaned up. Who is the, who is just no mere mother-in-law? So, I don't know, I'd say the mother-in-law. I mean, I hate when people snoop. Like, I'm the type of person that if my mom says, go into my purse and grab this for me, I will still grab my mom's purse and bring it to her and be like, no, you just look. I've just, I've never been the snooping type. I've always been respectful of people's privacy. 
you know, when my husband and I were dating, I could never snoop. It just, it's, it's gross. I don't know. I wouldn't want it done to me, so I'm glad she caught her and, you know, made her out to look like the asshole because she is. Um, let's see. Um, just, I'm going to give a trigger warning because one of them is pretty heavy, but just wanted to say that. Okay. Am I the asshole for giving my sister 13 k to pay her IVF cycle with consulting my husband already, like, without knowing any further? Like, yeah, you need to talk to your spouse. My female 33 sister, female 34, has been struggling with infertility for years. She and my brother-in-law resorted to so many options, including trying rounds of IVF. This is costly, so as a result, a number of IVF cycles had cost them a lot, and none of them worked. My sister and brother-in-law were advised to take a break from the physical and emotional and financial toll this unsuccessful IVF treatment has had on them. But my sister wanted to try one more time before she enters her mid-30s where her chances are lower. My parents refused to give her any more money, so she came over to my place where she had a mental breakdown, begging me to pay. I decided to help her and helped pay by pulling 13 k from my husband and mine's shared account. My husband was out of town for days and I didn't go out of my way to tell him after he missed my initial call before going back and forth, or be go before going forth and giving my sister the money. No. I brought it up with him on the phone later, and he blew up at me saying I shouldn't have made such decision and taken money out of our joint account without consulting him first. And I said I tried calling and he didn't pick up the first time, but he said still I shouldn't have made any moves till I had talked to him first. Then said he didn't agree with what that I gave a huge sum of money that he worked hard for given the facts or given the fact he contributes seventy percent to this account and said I messed up big time. I tried to explain my sister's situation and how this was an emergency and assured him she'd return the money and he said no she won't since she doesn't even have a job same with her husband and said i shouldn't support their bad decision and want a baby when they're broke to begin with an argument with him and said he was acting cruel and unsupportive of my family but he corrected me saying he's not a doormat and worked hard for the money that I had no problem giving away without even telling him about. But that is my sister and I feel obligated to help her out. Yet he refused to understand that. That was the last time we spoke. He demanded I take the money back ASAP, but I haven't responded to him, to him yet. Am I the asshole? Yes. Especially, okay, why is it an emergency? She says that it was emergency. She had to take out the money. They were advised that they needed to take a break. So I don't believe it was an emergency. You know, I could see if something happened and that was an emergency and maybe helping her after consulting the husband. And I don't believe that they will pay her back. It's like neither of them have a job. How do they expect to afford a baby if IVF works if they don't have a job? Either one. That floors me. It's like, how can you be so irresponsible? And it's like, who's been footing the bill previously for their IVF treatments? Because from what I understand, IVF treatments, they can vary from, you know, like 10 to 15 to 25,000. Depends if your insurance pays for your medication or not. And I don't know. 
I think this is going to drive a huge wedge between her and her husband. I think she's definitely the asshole. I don't think her sister's going to pay her back. I, I think it's stupid and irresponsible that she gave her that much money for treatments when the doctor said they should take time off and neither of them have a job. It's just, I'm floored. <clears throat> okay, one of them says, and this was an emergency. A broken bone is an emergency. Trapped in a foreign country and needs to get home immediately is an emergency. Needs to escape an abusive situation is an emergency. Being in the ICU is an emergency. IVF is never an emergency is a luxury for the financially privileged. Correct. You took $13,000, a little over 9000 being his, without even consulting him first. Let's face it, you knew he'd say no, which is why you didn't try to talk to him, and essentially threw it in the garbage. You're the asshole, and if I were him, I'd never be able to trust you again. Very true. Um, then it said edited because I want to make a couple things clear. I do not believe the money will go to IVF. I find it unlikely the doctor will agree to supply another round if they're prescribed a break. I also find their final try to be a very low chance. I also don't believe that OP or husband will ever see that money again, even if they do, or even if they don't do another round of IVF, hence why, oops, Hence why it went in the garbage. Another edited. Um, thank you for the awards. Someone said, and gave it to a couple who both currently have no jobs to pay him back. Yep. You're the asshole. Your husband has every right, right to be extremely upset. How in the world can you justify this as an emergency? Not even close. And calling one time with no answer does not justify giving the money either. And people with no jobs shouldn't be having kids because they can't support them. You planning on giving them money for raising a kid? That's what I thought too. So, that's bullshit. Um, if you hear my son, I'm sorry. He just woke up from a nap and he's squirrely. My husband had, had today off, so my son loves when my husband's home and... I don't know, just more dad time, which he loves. So if you hear squealing and stuff, <laughs> it's my son. He's okay. Don't worry. Um, let's see. I have so many good ones. Um, okay, this one, this one's insane. I was talking about this with my husband, and we were like, what the hell? Okay, am I the asshole for telling my sister no when she asked to have my house, despite knowing she has more children, needs more space? For some context, I, 29, female, have an older sister, 34, female. About five years ago, our mom died, and her money was split in between us. The house, though, was going to go to whoever had a child first. I was 24 at the time of my mom's death and clearly didn't plan to have children anytime soon. So when my sister announced her pregnancy one year after my mom's death, I wasn't upset. I wasn't even sure I wanted the house in the first place since it wasn't my style. Eventually, I meet my husband, 30 male, and we got our own house. My husband makes a lot of money and the house we bought... I can't talk. He bought is almost three times the size of the house my mom had left behind. As of today, my sister has four children and is currently pregnant with their fifth child. I, on the other hand, just got pregnant with my first child. My sister and her husband came over for dinner the other day. She brought up the fact that I was pregnant with my first child and how she already had four, about to be five. I questioned her because I wasn't sure where this was going, and then she said the following, I mean, you and Alexander, my husband, only want two kids. Why don't we switch houses? I could have 
this one and you take mom's house I would appreciate it it would really help with space and you know and you would make me and your niece and nephew so happy that's messed up basically the house that OP and her husband bought the sister now wants to trade houses it's like how does that work like their house probably is more expensive I'm sure they have a mortgage it's probably not paid out right who thinks like that that is such entitlement I laughed out loud the house mom had left behind was big and it was more than enough space for a fifth child I know my sister wants my house because it's more modern looking than mom's I replied by asking her if she is mentally ill and if she felt okay I was joking I will admit it wasn't the best thing to say but it was the first thing in my brain could process to say with that she started screaming she called me selfish and asked if I had no compassion for her. She went on and on about how I know her and her husband are struggling with money and that the old house just wasn't doing it for her. I yelled back and told her to get out of my house. With that, her and her family left. Her husband was glaring at me the whole time and my husband couldn't do anything but laugh because he found the situation ridiculous. Since I've received or since then I've received texts from distant family members saying things such as your sister never asked you for anything just do her one favor and your mother didn't die for you to treat your sister like an animal like I did or all I did was tell her no and everyone's acting like I'm evil their words have really made me rethink if I did the right thing so tell me am I the asshole Wow. That is messed up. I mean, she's lucky in the first place that she has a big enough house for five children and probably doesn't have to pay any mortgage. It's probably paid for. That is so messed up. Someone put, not the asshole. She got a free house and she is still complaining. If she feels that there isn't enough space, she, then she should probably stop having children. Agreed. And she has had, because her mom died, what, um, five years prior? So, and she announced she had her first child a year after that. So in four years, she's on her fifth child. So, wow. Yeah, she's lucky she doesn't have to pay for the house at all. I don't know, when I hear stuff like that, it's just, I think people are so entitled and ungrateful. Like, wow, I love to have a house free and clear. Okay. Am I the asshole telling my coworker that I will report him after he announced my pregnancy during lunch break? I, female 33, have been working in this company for four years. I have a great relationship with my coworkers, and one of them being Austin. Austin is incredibly sociable and easy to adapt with new coworkers. We talk about all kinds of stuff while, of course, keeping it professional. I'm married and recently found out that I was pregnant, but only my husband knew about it. I haven't even told anyone in our family or friend circle. The other day at work, me and the coworkers were on lunch break and Austin was with us. We talked, then he suddenly got up from his chair and asked for everybody's attention for a minute. I didn't know what, was, what that was about till he loudly announced that I was pregnant. I was stunned, like mouth open, eyes not moving, just staring at him as he and the others rushed to congratulate me and flood me with well wishes and parenting jokes and advice. I was in utter shock. I asked how he knew, and he said, remember when you gave me a ride the other day? I saw your pregnancy test result on the dashboard. What if that wasn't hers? My first reaction was lashing out at him in front of everyone asking why the hell he just shared a private medical information at my workplace. He said he was just sharing our joy with everyone else, 
since only him and I knew. Other co-workers asked that I calm down, but I meanly told him he was out of line and that I will be reporting him to my superior for this, then stormed off while Austin just stood there. My female co-workers came by to tell me how rude I was towards Austin's nice gesture and insisted I hurt him and that I overreacted, especially for saying I will be reporting him since he was just sharing happy news with everyone and I was just being too sensitive, but I felt my privacy was violated, plus I wanted to tell everyone on my own terms. Still, my co-workers tried to talk me out of it. Not just that, but apologized to him for lashing out like that. Am I the asshole? No. Most people want to wait till they're out of the first trimester to tell people that they're pregnant, so they feel like they're in the clear. And it's like, what if she had that result and had a chemical pregnancy, which is an early miscarriage? I mean, that's messed up. And then how does he even know it's hers? What if it's her friends or her sisters? He just assumed. I don't know, I'd be pissed and I would hate it if someone else announced my pregnancy before I could. No, Austin is an asshole. Okay, someone said, not the asshole. What if it hadn't been yours at all, but your sister's? Or yours, but a memory from a baby you lost? Austin's behavior was wildly inappropriate. Agreed. Not the asshole. There is literally never, never a reason to announce someone's pregnancy for them without their direct permission. True. And then someone commented on that and they said, There is one. Attention. I'm going to go ahead and say Austin is a bit of a narcissist. Not the asshole. Report him. Yeah, Austin is an asshole. Okay, this one, trigger warning. I read this to my husband. We were both like, wow, this is so messed up. This is um, in the Surviving Infidelity subreddit. And the headline says, husband has been sleeping with a teenager. And it's basically they're asking for advice. Another, okay. Um, my 33 female husband, 32 male, has been having sex for a year and a half with a 15 year old girl in my house every time I went out over 20 times she claims we have been together for 15 years he moved in with my family when he was 16 due to his own family problems his half cousin 37 female is my best friend the 15 year old girl is her daughter so basically it's his half cousin's daughter so they're somewhat related he has known her since she was born that makes that so much worse he helped teach her how to walk and watched her grow up they are second half cousins ew i'm so disgusted horrified angry sad and guilty for not protecting her she lived with me for the last two years because her dad sexually physically abused her her stepmom tried to kill her, and her mother was not allowed to have her for other reasons. She has a ton of trauma and other problems. She is, was, like a daughter to me. I called her my niece, and she called me stepdad and him uncle. I think she meant stepmom. I thought I could trust my husband. I really did. Where I live, this is illegal. Canada, 16 is the age age of consent it has been happening since 14 when i found out i called the police and reported him he is going to jail he has not spoken to police but they are building a case my niece refuses to speak to police but she was the one who came clean and told me about it he admitted to it after i punched him in the face my niece and him claim they are in love that they turned to each other because they share trauma from both being in bad households growing up. She is not grown up though, she is 15. I just stopped talking to her. She moved into a group home. 
I feel terrible, like I abandoned my kid. I know it's not her fault, and I still love her, but we need some time. She claims they are not speaking anymore. We also have an eight-year-old son together that my niece called her little brother. All he knows is that we are separating and dad's moving out. That his cousin had to move because she needed more space. I have been a stay-at-home mom for eight years. I have next to zero education, no financial help, almost zero work experience because I had my kid at 25 and was just a cashier before that. He said he will cover rent and bills till February or until something changes. Working on getting help for after that, it's a process. I'm so worried about my son. What am I going to do when he goes to jail? Scared for my niece and her mental health. It has been 26 days. We are splitting time with our son right now. I have no choice. Anyway, or anyone have any advice for my super strange situation? Edit to add. People, or just so people can better understand how hard this is for me to accept. When I was four, my sister, who was six, was raped and murdered by a pedophile. So this subject is really hard for me. I just cannot believe I married a pedophile. I don't even know what to say to that. That is, I can't believe that. And... In the comments, people are encouraging her to further her education, like an LPN or something, trying to hype her up that, you know, she can still go to school, provide for her and her son. I don't know. I just, I couldn't imagine. Okay, this one pissed me off. Am I the asshole for having my medication la laying around? I, female 18, got diagnosed with ADHD a couple months ago, and of course I then got on meds. I am also on a couple other meds since I currently have the flu. I usually keep them on the counter in my bathroom. Most of the time the bathroom is locked since I have a little brother, five, who likes to eat everything he finds. Yesterday my aunt and cousin, 15, came over and didn't lock the bathroom door since my brother wasn't at home. My cousin then used it and I didn't think anything of it. Well, a couple hours after they left, I wanted to take my meds and I noticed that my ADH or ADHD meds, Adderall, were all gone. Oh, I'd be pissed. I figured that I must have put them somewhere else since I forgot, or I forget things easily. So I started searching for them, but I couldn't find them. I gave up and didn't take them since I could just do the work I wanted to do tomorrow. A few hours later, my aunt called me and asked what the hell is wrong with me for giving my cousin my meds. Apparently, he told his mom that I gave him, I gave them to him since he really needs them for school, which is total bullshit. I never, or I'd never give them out especially not to my cousin who tends to do stupid shit like taking drugs. I explained the situation to her, but she wouldn't listen and called me an asshole for not respecting her or her child. I hate people like that that are like, oh, my child would absolutely not do that. And, oh. Am I the asshole? Update. My cousin is now banned from our house, and if he ever takes my meds again, we're going to file a report. Also, my meds were not in the original bottle, so he can't get them refilled. Important, I do not feel comfortable with police getting involved due to a thing that happened a few years ago. I'd rather solve this with them personally. Edit, my meds have to be on the counter, otherwise I forget to take them. I tried multiple things like sticky notes and setting alarms, but it didn't do the trick for me. I need to see them in order to take them. Because of that, my bathroom is locked all the time, even when I am in there, since I don't want to put my little brother at risk. It is also important to know that my ADHD meds were not next to my flu meds, which means that my cousin had to actively look for them. 
Also, English isn't my first language, and since some people in the comments like to point my mistakes out, I'm sorry for any mistakes. I would be so pissed. I think I would actually report it to the police because now she's without her medication. What is she going to do? She shouldn't have to suffer because her cousin's an asshole. I think I would file a report with the police because that's the only way you can get a refill on a controlled substance early and let him face the consequences because um, people were asking if she had proof that he stole it and she does in text messages and she asked for him back and he already gave them away to his friends. See, in my state, if, say, you know, that happened to me where my cousin stole, say I was taking fentanyl and stole my fentanyl and gave it to his friends and one of them overdosed and died, I would be charged with third degree murder. So, I don't know, I think it's disgusting, especially when the aunt is blaming her, when it's her precious little son that took her meds. And he didn't take any of the flu ones, he deliberately took just the Adderall. So, what an asshole. I think he needs to be taught a lesson. That's just me personally. So, I think so far, um, that will be it. I already have 32 minutes on here, but I figured I would just do a quick kind of video and wish everyone a happy new year. Um, I hope everyone had fun New Year's Eve. Um, I went to bed early. <laughs> that was nice. My husband's been home the past few days and I love that. It's just, I don't know. I just, it's nice when he's home. So anyway, guys, um, let me know what you think of these stories. If you agree or disagree, if you think they're the asshole or not, what you would do if you're put in one of these positions. I don't know. I like to hear other people's thoughts on these. So anyway, guys, have a great one. And as always, don't be the asshole. <laughs> Bye, guys.